Position tolerance is certainly one of our flagship symbols, the ones that we use very commonly in geometric tolerancing. It controls the location of features of size, so holes, slots, tabs, pins, and even irregular features of size as well. If you feel like you want to control the location of a surface, then you're going to use profile tolerance instead. Now, datum feature references are usually required. You have position to your datum reference frame, but there are some special cases where you can position features to themselves only with no datum references. Common shapes of the tolerance zones are probably going to be cylindrical zones is most common, but locating slots will use two parallel planes. Spheres will use a spherical tolerance zone. And we'll talk about these specialty applications of conically shaped tolerance zones and even these position boundary. We can make it any shape you want. They are three-dimensional tolerances, always position. And of course, you can use a modifier MMC and LMC with these as well. So let's at first show a review from what we've shown most of the class already, regular old position tolerance. So here we have our datum reference frame established as back face is A, bottom edge is B, and side edge is C. And we use basic dimensions to tell you the true position of where the holes are supposed to be. There's no tolerance on those dimensions that are theoretically exact. Now when I say this hole has two tolerances, this is your size tolerance tells you how big and small it can be. That's your MMC and LMC. And then it has a position tolerance of 0.2. What I like about position tolerance is you can draw it. They're going to be cylindrical shaped tolerance zones right on the true position. And now the axis of the hole has to lie within. Now, worst case, how much can that axis shift off center if they're produced at MMC? Only 0.1. So remember, diameter tolerance zone is 0.2, but that's really plus or minus 0.1. A good way to explain that here is if I take a cross section, you can see these cylindrical tolerance zones a little better. This is a picture that I also had in Unit 3, where I have a cylindrical shaped tolerance zone, and now the axis can either shift, like it is in that right hole, or it can tilt, as it is in that left hole. So position is not only controlling location, but it also controls the orientation on that feature as well. Now this is mostly what we talked about in Unit 3, where the axis of the hole has to fall within that cylindrical shaped tolerance zone. However, there is another way to explain this with the MMC modifier, is you can look at it as the virtual condition boundary. So this position tolerance of 0.2 creates a virtual condition pin that the holes must clear. So remember in Unit 7, we talked about virtual condition. 11.92 is our maximum material condition. But when you subtract the position tolerance from it, it creates an 11.72 virtual condition. So think of it as a gauge. If you built a gauge to check this part, you would have a back plane for A, a bottom edge for B, and a side edge for C. And now your holes have to clear these four pins. Now these four pins would be built at that virtual condition. So if you check an 1192 hole with an 1172 fixed pin, then you're checking to see if it's in position tolerance within 0.2. So check your hole with a 0.2 under pin, then you know it's in position tolerance within that 0.2. So either way, it can be explained this way, that the axis has to lie within the cylindrical tolerance zone, or the surface has to clear that virtual condition boundary. So in Unit 3, we talked more about the cylindrical tolerance zone and the axis. In Unit 7, and we talked about more on the virtual condition boundary. And a quick review on that MMC modifier. Remember, the MMC says you get a 0.2 position tolerance at the maximum material condition. So 1192 is our maximum material condition. That's where you get the 0.2 size. And then what happens when you make the hole bigger? Bonus tolerance. So as the hole gets larger in size, then it gets an increase in position tolerance, but still clears that same virtual condition boundary for our mating part. So that's a quick review on our cylindrical tolerance zone. It's the most common form of position tolerance, things we've already talked about in Unit 3 and Unit 7, but a good jumping off point for the more specialized things we'll do in the next parts of this section.